Aintree, the home of the Grand National, and three fantastic days of tans, teeth, and talent. We'll go with uh, the Grand National, of course. A brilliant meeting. Joel and Frankie alongside me. And now you are kind of ensconced in Liverpool life all of a sudden. I have, yes, mate. I've, I'm very much enjoying it. I've not, not changed me at all, but I've got some turkey teeth now. Uh, no, do you know what? I'm, I'm dead enjoying it. I'm working in the big tower every morning. Uh, it's a bit of a trek getting there at four o'clock in the morning, um, but you can see entry um, from the tower and it's absolutely persisting down. It, it's been like non-stop really bad. Uh, so I think Grand National this year, it might be like old times where we get like mm. a, a lottery. A red marauder. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, one of those. He, like, he's no idea of that is. <laughs> <laughs> you like a social do. You're in the right place <clears throat> this week. I am, yeah. I'm glad that Joel's just taking the mick out of the entire of Liverpool ahead of the National. But, they love it. <laughs> they, no, I mean, they, they, they love it. That's what, that's what it's all about, isn't it? If no, I'm it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. yeah. No, it's great meeting. Um, I really enjoy it. And to be honest, it's been spoken about in the past as a step down from Cheltenham in terms of competition and runners, but it looks as good as ever, really. The Thursday mm. card could be, you know, as good as any Cheltenham Stronger card. Stronger challenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, really, it's really, really good three days racing and... Yeah, it's a lot of fun. If anyone gets the chance to go, I always recommend it. Yeah. Are you, are you, are you going dressed like that, or are you? Um, yeah. You're a bit underdressed. Oh come on. Yeah, You've know. got the tan. Yeah. And <laughs> the teeth. And the teeth. And the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Obviously, it is all about the Grand National, but it is a brilliant supporting car. Now, there's going to be some themes throughout the, throughout the week. Obviously, there's always a lot of stories around the National. The weather's going to be one of them. As you said, they've had so much rain. It's going to be really testing ground. And also, there's this trainers' titles battle. Dan Skell and Paul Nichols, where they go head to head on so many times. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Have we forgotten about Paul Nichols? Because he was, I know he's always quiet at Cheltenham, but even more quiet. And mm. Dan's kind of stole the show a bit. I, I'm interested to see how Paul Nichols runners go this week because you, you'd normally get to entry and go, right, this is when the Nichols horses start firing. But I'm, I'm not coming here with loads of confidence. I, I think Dan Skell could have a good entry as well as a good Cheltenham. Yeah, what's Brave Man's game wearing now? Uh, apart from you know, fake eyelashes, what, blinkers, <laughs> cheek pieces, whatever it is. I think more than that. I, I still think, well, it's pretty obvious, it's not a thing. Whoever wins the Grand National wins the, the title, really. Which brings William Mullins into play. Which does. Yeah. So I, I think that, if he wins the National, you've had 15 winners. And then with the Scottish <laughs> National. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> still on the side. Right, well, we mentioned that. Let's just stuck in because they go head to head in the very first race. Grey Dawn in Ginny's Destiny, just like they did at Cheltenham. They were first and second. They're the top two in the market. Willie's got a late Tomp as well. That little trainer's title battle is all ensconced in the very first race of the meeting, Joel. Yeah, and I think Grey Destiny here, it was two to one a couple of days ago. You've combined the two. <laughs> what, 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 what was that? Grey Destiny. Destiny, you can't be wrong if you've got Grey Destiny. <laughs> Hang on a second. Grey Dawning or Ginny's Hang Destiny? On. Yeah, so, no, 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 I'm going for Ginny's Dawning. Right, so <laughs> that's it. Um, great, great. I, I, refuse, I refuse to put my glasses on sitting next to him. <laughs> uh, great dawning. Uh, and it's also going to get backed off the boards as well. The 2 to 1 94 is long, long gone. Even money. I thought this would be odds on for a start. Um, and at a race course, you love a grey. You've got all those scousers that are going to be there loving the grey going around. It's going to get smashed. And I think it deservedly will. I can't see the form being turned around from Julius Destiny. Uh, there's no reason for that. And uh, Il Etomp is is not as good. You're in the, your camp. You're in the great. Dawn Thank you very much. Well. Yeah, I am. Uh, I, I agree. I cannot see Ginny's Destiny turning the Cheltenham form around. Cheltenham's kind of made to suit Ginny's Destiny, and Aintree, you could argue, is going to better suit Great Dawning. So I'd have them further apart. I couldn't have Ginny's Destiny winning. I could maybe make a bit of a stronger case for Elite Tom. So I think he's got a chance. I always thought he'd appreciate a step up in trip. He's run well over two miles, three and a bit. Um, I think Grey Dawning wins. I won't be going mad at five to six or whatever, but I do think Grey Dawning wins. Bit big for you, that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> one to two, soon, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's one other story, and that's the return of Nicky Anderson. Obviously, talking to Miss Cheltenham, as we know, all the mm. issues they had at the yard. Bang! Second race, Sergino. That's really going to set the tone for the week in terms of his yard, isn't it? Well, it sets Shiskin's price, doesn't it? Because right. um, if Sergino hacks up, I'm all in on Shiskin. If Sergino tailed off. I couldn't, I couldn't have it with, with stolen money. Um, what price would this horse be if it had run at Cheltenham? Well, it depends what he did at Cheltenham, well, I guess. <laughs> if it had won at Cheltenham. If it had won at Cheltenham, um, what do you want at Cheltenham? I, think, I mean, yeah, it's, it's I, the, I think he wins. <laughs> I, I, I think he wins. I think he yeah. could win at 80% fit. I think he'd probably win on the bridle. And I'm willing to take the chance. I think he's still fairly priced. And Henderson's been pretty positive. He's yeah. never going to come out and be bullish about this week because... If it goes wrong, he'll look silly. But he's been saying they've all worked well. They're all back to full work. I still remember watching Sergino 
from the rail and, and it was one of the standout performances I've seen at Cheltenham this year. Like Karzizi r- ran well, but not a superstar. I thought you got the winner. Well, she looked the winner, I should say. Just, <sighs> she idled or? Yeah, I don't know. Like she sets the standard, I don't think. I, th- I think she does set the standard. And I just think she's a safer play at the price than I, I, I think eight, eight to eleven. Like so, you know, it's even money. I was all over that. I think he'll. I think he'll win. I think he could win eight. eight, eight double, what about uh, <laughs> that uh, Joseph Bryan horse in uh, Nurb- Nurb- all the rage. Nurban Nurban Rage? Actually, in the trial for the morning, now, a lot of people fancied him. I mean, I wouldn't say go, go as far as to say given a shocker by JJ Slevin, but it wasn't given the best. I would. No, I said I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far, and we stayed on really well. Danny Mullins, who's one of my favourites, takes over, um, and at ten to one. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd play the reverse forecast, um, and, and that nerve bring ring thing. I, I think everyone's trying to be clever. Everyone's trying to be smart. Go, I can't back a short well, price favour that hasn't been fit. All right, but can you get can you get out of the first three? Uh, no, I, again, I, I could be proven wrong, but I think uh, Khalif de Berlay's got it all to prove. I wouldn't be backing no, the, the Nichols the runner form, in this. The Kevin's phone kind of got let down. Uh, yeah. Can I tell you my theory? Oh, okay. Go on then. Right. So. Is it a long one? Well, no, I'm against Sir Gino, only, only because of the price grounds. And we don't know what he's been through and what's happened and stuff. And if he comes, I will happily see him what, win at 8 to 11, 4 to 6. I'll happily let him win. But I am. With your money elsewhere? With Shishkin. <laughs> what, explain that. Because he's so young, Sir Gino, and he's only had the two starts, and we don't know how he's going to react to this layoff or whatever he's had, where we know Shishkin, we know what he's like fresh, we know how he runs, we know he loves it here at Aintree, we know he's been here the last two years. I think there's less issue with his forced absence than Sir Gino, and is a bigger price. Well, you're backing before Sir Gino so, runs. This is the, this is the thing. Because otherwise you lose the price, don't you? Exactly, this is the point, isn't it? Do you back him? If Sir Gino is out with a wash in, Oh, well, you're getting four, five to one, are you? Exactly. This is what I mean. So this is this is more. Of a and well, you still back him if the Virginia doesn't run well. You're backing whatever. Probably. You do. You will. Just because he's he's been there twice before. He won this race last year. He is on song Britain's best staying chaser. It's not a gimme though. Even if I he know is. It's not fit. a gimme. Jerry Colomb's second in a gold cup. I know, but just Jerry Colomb's chance better than Shishkin. Do you think Jerry Colomb has got a much better chance than Shishkin? Yes. No. She, well, no. I, I don't know. It's so, well, I'm so con- like we've done this before, haven't we? When the form adds up, but for some yeah. reason you still can't fancy a horse. Like Jerry Colomb's beaten all the right horses throughout this year and come second in a Gold Cup. But he's just got another aura of yeah, bomb proof. When I watch him, I just don't think he screams as the winner. And he even won <laughs> at Intry last year. Yeah, it was yeah. a weak race, yeah. so maybe flattered. But when I think Jerry Colomb, I don't think we're the winner of this race. I think Cheltenham suits him a bit of undulations and tough in the finish. He's quite a gritty horse, isn't he? But Aintree's flatter, might need a little bit more speed. I don't know, I just, I, I want to take him on. I do like Shishkin in this, but I know you're the other Irish horse. I'm going you? rogue, yeah, Corbett's Cross, which is maybe bizarre to back a, a National Hunt Chase winner against a Gold Cup second and a... But what, I mean, to what, be fair, what, that, 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 that won well. What would have been... Was it Embassy, like, Embassy Gardens? It did in, 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 win well. You watch it quicken when, when asked. Once he's got over the last and asked to quicken. I think he went 17 lengths clear or something mental yeah. like that. And, and look, I was backing him for the Brown Advisory. I wanted him to go there. Obviously, he didn't because Factor File was supposed to be the next superstar. So they split them up and they both won their races. I think Corbett's Cross is better than we give him credit for, or at least better than a National Hunt Chase winner. And what about Brave Man's Game? I mean, is it, is, it, is it horrible to say the horse is now broken? <clears throat> that's second last year in the Gold Cup. He's not with the same horse since. No, that's what I mean. It was a fair effort. The Gold Cup I does... fifth in the Gold Cup was as good as you could expect. Yeah. I think that was about right. Mm. I mean, he got beat by Gentleman's Game. He got beat by Hewick and the King George when he should have won when Shiskin come down. Um, he got beat by Rob Bagai in the Betfair. He's just beat, 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 beat. But do you think this is the owners, and this is not knowing anything, this is the owners going, I want to, I want to go here, we want to go there, we want to go here, we want to go there. Because this is not really what Paul Nichols does, is it? <clears throat> and, and I think, the, on, on the face of it, I, I, I said to you, when this horse first came out, you know, everyone said this is the best, you know, this is going to be like the next Denman and whatever. And it's been nowhere, nowhere near. Good horse, it's high a, class horse. It's a savage race though, looking through it. Jerry Colomb's second Gold Cup, Shishkin won the race last year. Corbett's Cross, National Hunt Chase winner. A Hoy Senor was second to Shishkin. Just got and beat. And he loves Aintra. And loves Aintra. Aintra. Gentleman's game beat Brave Man's game at Weatherby. Like, he's, he's got a lot of horses in there yeah. with arguably more class than he's got to beat, hasn't he? Mm. Again, I can't, have, I can't have many. I don't even know if I fancy one Nichols runner this whole three days, which would be 
unbelievable if that can happen. I'm not happen so sure either. Well, I'm glad you said that because, again, I'm going to expand on my Nicky Henderson theory because I don't think it's a great entry hurdle. And you've got Bob Bollinger in Perry Pass to take up a massive chunk of the market. And again, I'm kind of relying on what we see of Sergino and Shishkin. Let it down I mean, I mean, <laughs> no. Legit. No. I think, Marie, again, don't tell me Marie's wrong. Yeah, yes. it's no. Oh, shit. Right. Thanks, for, thanks for watching. <laughs> I'll see you at Punches Town. I'll be amazed. <laughs> I'll be amazed if she won. I think the dead go. I'll back that. I'll back that Cheltenham. I went there on New Year's Day. I don't know if I told you this. No, you didn't. Tell no, me. no. I went there on New Year's Day when uh, Bob Ollinger oh, yeah, won. Yeah, la la sides on yeah the last leg. And also keeping Rachel in there. And I'm like, go. Oh, no, I'll oh, just <clears throat> let, her, let her out. But won well. So, went off 7 to 4 that day. And now she's in here at 14 to 1. I she's I been expensive to follow. She's she been has. beat. So, so at this, at this point, the two endless horses have been beat out of sight. Pulled well, up. If they've been beat, then I'll re I'll reevaluate. Yeah, right. <laughs> Cash <laughs> out. I, I just thought I was looking. At, I, I couldn't have Bob Ollinger at the price. Impaired pass. I'm a big fan of. I am a big fan of. But has, has he been right this year? Nope. I'm not sure he's jumping. He's been running over right. two miles. I know he has. But even so, they thought he could be a champion. What, what was put in his place? Only been beaten by what? Ballymore form when yeah. he won over two and a half. Gaelic Warrior was behind him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. And then just beaten by Tier Hooper on really tough conditions. I don't think he jumped that well in either run this year. Who's won the stairs? I don't but know. I think, I think two and a half is game. to eight. Yeah. Maybe it is. Step but but you're completely or... wrong anyway, because Langadan is a Group 1 horse <laughs> that they've been messing about with. I, I a Group 1? What's he going after? A, a Grade 1 a grade <laughs> horse that they've been messing about with, haven't they? You know, let, let's is be... he not in here for the prize money? Well, yeah, yeah, I think so. But you know, if all the horses go, you're getting three places. To, again, you're yeah, not... a lot of entries, to be fair. He's in everything. Yeah, I yeah, think right, you're, uh, you're, you're still... You know. I, this, this horse does not owe me a penny. I was going to say, <laughs> since Cheltenham, I think you're still just sticking with it now, aren't you? Could you imagine... <laughs> the uproar. The absolute uproar if he was wins. Well, the, the tailed, tailed off, tailed off, tailed off. He's been tailed off in a Lanzarote. He's been tailed off in Ascot Handicap and, and he's then, been masqueraded as a grade one horse. Yeah. <laughs> but this, I mean, this, this, the, this, the this ulcers, is a story. I'd love that. I'd love that. <laughs> and they're probably, you know, hack up and they get dropped 14 pounds. <laughs> so what is he up 10 pounds from Cheltenham? Yeah. Which is fair. Yeah. Which is fair. What is he, what, about one? Five one also. Oh, on five one, yeah. Yeah, on five. Well, I know him. I've got a post of him, of him and Shakira on my wall. <laughs> um, yeah. Harry Skelton and Shakira. Yeah, he's paid for my toilet. <laughs> Um, that's so, you, you, think Lang, you actually I, think Langer Genu Genuinely, I think this. this you actually think one, one of the best each way. Mm, one of the best each way bets. Well, be but also, he's, he's done nothing this season because he's not been very well. When he's been the races, he's, he's turned up at a walk around, whatever. R romps home at Cheltenham. If they've kept him ticking along, ticking along, they want the prize money, obviously. You know, for fifth, sixth, seventh place or whatever. But he, he, you know, he might be as good as this. Can't see it. Well, you just said it wasn't a great. It's not a great race. It's not a great race. I think. I think the front two are worth taking. I. I don't think they both right. in their race. I think there's two spaces for something. Right. Is Langadan better than uh, the Mean Lion? Yes. Better than Marie's Rock or Marie's Rock, as you call it. Better than Lucia. Not at the weights. Yes. We'll Stand up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's all about opinions. That's what people so say. So you're backing Langadan. You're yeah. backing Marie's Rock, which I think is mad. I'm backing Imperial Pass. So we, I don't expect anything above two to one. <laughs> Fifteen to eight, come on. Hey, look, at the end of the day, we'll see who's got most winners. <laughs> Fred, can you do one of your pushes? <laughs> uh, right, that kind of takes care of Thursdays. I haven't even got a thank hang you on. for Langer, Dan. Hang on, hang on. Oh, no, hang on, no. Hang on, hang on. Hang on Sorry, hang on, you did tell me, didn't you? Hang on, hang on. Hang Sorry. On. Best bet of the week. Oh, Best my God, it's shortening by the second. Sam Ra. The Red Rum. Was probably, yeah. Uh, I don't understand the, why they named a two-mile chase after Red Rum. Yeah, bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, 440, two-mile, handicap chase. Got no luck in running... Um, at Chatham was probably my better the festival and just got squeezed on the rail when everything else quickened has been dropped a couple of pounds the two that make the market and that were the one two were they at Cheltenham one three at Cheltenham yeah, unexpected, unexpected party in Path de Rue they've yeah. both gone up in the weights Sam Ra is a grade one horse and he's I don't even think he's one of those that sits between grade one, grade 11 and handicap 11 and you don't know what to do with him he's competitive in grade ones he got targeted at um, the festival in a handicap. He got in off a reasonable mark. He, he was going to race off 11 stone 8. Like, and and, and there, everyone's talked about his Cheltenham form. He's come second to Bam Bridget Aintree, who missed the festival, went there fresh, and was only beaten like half length. I, I, I honestly think it's better of the week, Sam Rock. There's all in there as well. I remember you tipped up months ago, beginning of the season, Whiskey Wealth. Yeah. He didn't win for three runs, and now he's on Attrick now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's, uh, he's dead to me. <laughs> Good job you backed him when he came eighth. Yeah, yeah that was right every time. Listen, lads. Listen, lads. I've got one for you here. Um, in there, 
and it was nearly, if it, if it runs here again, and going up against, uh, no, I'll leave it, I'll leave it. No, I'll leave it, I'll leave it. Yeah, yeah move on, on to Friday? Yeah, yeah, move on to Friday, yeah. don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to start arguing just yet because I've got some big arguments lined up later. Corbett's cross wins on the Thursday. I'm giving away I'm, I'm giving wins up. on the Friday, no? Okay, Corbett's cross in the JP at Manus Colours in a Grade 1 novice. Leads me nicely. On to the opening on Friday then because he's got two. Not only has he got the runaway Kim Yo when talking of also being well handicapped. <laughs> I mean, again, this is, I mean, that was his target. What, 13, 13 pounds up for this? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's somewhere along those lines. That was a day. Um, but he's also got Iroko. Yeah. And Shanti Classico, who I put up uh, at Cheltenham. But I, I'm all over heart, heart wood in this. Oh, yeah. yeah this this, this could time, be yeah. one of the best bets of the week for me. Um, I was just looking back at some of the races this morning, beaten by um, you know, Blood Destiny and Grange Clare West. Um, Corbett's cross behind that day as well. Um, Olo Games. That four, if you got the DRF for that 14th win at Leopardstown, just waiting and waiting and waiting. And I think they've got this completely wrong. Uh, Emery de Bromhead, Rachel Blackmore, around what, seven to one? It has been nibbled out this week. And I think from the other three around at Cheltenham, Hartwood. It's interesting. He's really you've, got, strong for me. you've got three horses coming from handicaps. Yeah. Or impressive handicap winners, admittedly. Canty, Classico, Hartwood, I know what you're thinking. Against horses they've been running in Grader Company all, all season. And, and then you've got Iroko, who, okay, I've just a little bit of allegiance. I went to see him before Cheltenham. Obviously, John Drew and Jr. is on board. But he never seemed to be able to go the gallop over two and a half. Strong pace as well. Yeah, it was. Death, yeah. And he never really. Could, but if you look at the line, I, you, stop it two out, I think he's going to be well beaten. You look at the line. Yeah, he stays, stays he's on. staying on all the way. Back at the three mile, he was third around the hurdles over three miles. This is only his third run of the season. It looked like a plot job, didn't it? If it was a, a, <laughs> yeah, a, a lesser yeah. race course, yeah. it, it, you, you would think, oh, they're setting us up for a touch. I think the fact that they've put on other way of thinking in, it just means he's kind of a little bit overlooked. I agree, but I think the other way around. I think Iroko's maybe not as good as we think. He was only a Martin Pipe winner. Like he's not, not yeah, they, they, they've not turned up to him. <laughs> Shall I be the shots? Bambridge. Yeah, yeah. rubbish race. Yeah. Might as well All right, fair, a seller. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually quite, quite fancy the winner of Martin Piper's art to win at the first uh, entry. <laughs> anyway, we'll ignore that. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't think he's a superstar. I, I'd have it the other way around. I think they think, I know your way of thinking can win and Iroko's in there because he Pace won't maker. go three miles on, <laughs> on a... It's, good, it's a good race, but you know. one we haven't spoken about, but on the market, you spoke about horses that have either been plotted in handicaps or behind graded horses. Giovinco. Yeah. Mm. You, were, you were all over that, weren't you? Staying on behind fact to file. Yeah. yeah. If you're trying to measure, you know, horses finish like Oroco, what, fifth in the Turners, Giovinco third in the Brown Advisory and has won over course and distance earlier in the season. Was staying on well. I know fact to file won hands and heels and uh, Great Dawning was much harder at it in the Turners, but... I still think that's a decent bit of form, and eights is pretty big. It's a good race this year. Well, competitive. It is. It's, 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 it's weird. Because, because Broadway Boy would come into that because he didn't you know, skip Cheltenham. No, we've had this conversation. It's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? You look at the first race Thursday, look at the first race Thursday, five runners, one, two from Cheltenham, and then you've got this six runs the first time Friday. We go, oh, this is brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It's only got one more runner, but... It just just seems, different angles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So many more different angles. Yeah. But again, JP McManus, obviously brilliant supporter of racing. He had so many winners at Cheltenham. And he's got a good hand there, and then he's got Mystical Power, who was was he unlucky a little bit in the Supreme because he mm. he come there to win his race, and I think he got outstayed by a horse who was probably better over further on very soft ground. But what I love about this race, the top, we get to see Dysot Enos, but an interest to me for Fergal O'Brien. But do already. we? I think so. But yeah, well, yeah. I had Paddy Brennan on the, on the radio yesterday, and he was talking about well, it's not about his ban. <laughs> Um, he wasn't talking about that, he was talking about your best chance and he's put up his bumper horse. Did not mention this horse whatsoever. Well, what I want to say is, look at the prices, his golden ace completely overlooked because I was impressed with it. Yeah, but if it's overlooked mm. by the jockey and he's going for a bumper horse, no. he's got a golden Elliot one to beat. A golden ace. Yeah, it's a fair point. And if you think that brighter days ahead has entered in the two and a half yeah. mile and his favourite, I think, for that. I just point. thought, I think she's double figures. I think double figures is, is ridiculous on what she did at Cheltenham. Mystical Power, I think, looked slightly novicey. At Cheltenham, I think out of all the runners in the Supreme, could and should improve the most. Just be a bit more professional in the way that he finished his race, and we know that he'll go on heavy ground. I, I did look uh, after I watched back all days of Cheltenham. He was the one that stuck out to me that would hopefully win next time. Well, my, my one, and I'll ask you here. I'm pretty strong on Firefox. Do you think the 
the, the one at Cheltenham was unlucky, stumbled. Yeah. My five lengths behind Slade Steel and I'd say what else was wrong. I led the quarter behind Mystical Power, stumbled, hampered. I thought that was the unlucky horse in the race. And if you're looking one for next time out, you, I would have. I definitely think it would have got past Mystical Power. If you cast your mind back to Cheltenham, Talker Supreme is all about Mystical Power. They're looking, obviously, Tully Hill and Witch and Mullins is. And then the morning of the race and the lead up to the race, there was a big word, especially in the press room, going around for Mr. Mr. Giff, Mr. Giff. Yeah. And he was really, and he was really well backed as well. And he travelled really well. Maybe a bit of an experience caught him out, but he's an interesting runner. And obviously, Paul Townend. Uh, is on him as well, so uh, again, I just think Golden Ace is overpriced at double figures, but it's a really good race. I hope the dead eight go again. Mark he's Walsh really good. Top jockey at this race. Well, if he's not being jocked off Grand National <laughs> ones. I think he might have uh, a he very good choose. chance. He didn't choose. He I know he didn't. I, don't know, but I, I think he'll be happy with what he's landed on. Okay, we'll get there. <laughs> Talk about that shortly. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> he's not on John Bomb. Nico's on that, obviously, for Nicky Anderson. And again, it's another one, isn't it, coming from under the cloud. Can he bounce back? This is probably... A few more question marks about him, though. There is, and this is probably a deeper melon that we've had in, in recent seasons. Remember the years Fakadudere was cleaning up in it. He's but, surely one you've got to take on. Steps him in trip, doesn't jump that well, didn't win last time out, and the Henderson factor. Well, again, we've got Nichols v Skelton. Pick the room protector at. Mm, I'd like... Pick the room has actually won on soft ground a few times, but I think he's... Arguably better on a quicker surface. Well, this is it's two and a half mile flat track, isn't it? As well, this is his this is his bag. It is, yeah. You were still in the stands watching with me last year when he won. Mm. I, I um, carried away. I, I hate to say because I've been against it all his career, and I hate that protector rap all day long, all day long. There's, there's too many question marks about everything else. Um, I think. But yeah, well, race, your, is your Alexia de, de Tits or where it's called? Is that the race? Yeah, it's been taken out because yeah. I thought that would go off, which is great, which is great. But uh, I think John Bon and Pictory just, just, just go off and, and, and mess about with each I other. I think about conflated again. I think. And, and Protector Rex runs them down. I think it's. It, 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 I hate to say that because it's not a horse. I don't know really. why conflated is the price that he is. I'm not sure. Because, well, I mean, he was similar price at Cheltenham when I backed him and he was third. And I I wouldn't see him out the pieces go on. Doubled, yeah. in, doubled in price in 24 hours. Wouldn't see him out of the places. He's been declared for this and won't go mm. to the national. Um, he's got loads, you know, for the same reason I backed him at Cheltenham. He's been finished behind all the top staying chasers all year when looking a bit tired and then, you know, ran on well into third. I, I think ridden a little bit closer to the pace and on a flat track, he'll get closer and at a big price. I'd, yeah, I'm going to back him. Don't right. So conflated, protects a wrap. Uh, as long as the race hasn't come too soon, yeah, I think Protector up might take the beat. Now they've kind of found his trip, they're not trying to make him into a, a Gold Cup horse. And although he had a hard race, yeah. I think the Ryanair, he can take the Ryanair and as hard as, as, can as we, you can as the Gold Cup. Can we Cup. talk about the top of them? Yes. Because <laughs> didn't we all back right. Bill Baxter last Bill time? Bill Baxter, right. <laughs> and I tell you what, oh. he's got 28 to 1, but he's off exactly the same mark. <laughs> Is this a plot? Now, I mean, I mean let's be honest, we put, we put it up and it was our treble that we did on the punter's guide. Mm. And we were all like, Bill Baxter, Bill Baxter, Bill Baxter. It looks that way to me. Um, Why did none of us say he might go back to the top of the Why? Because he's done nothing since. Exactly. I mean, I, I mean absolutely well, nothing. He's yeah, back off one pound higher, isn't he? And if, and, if, and, if we, and if we like him, Bill Baxter, obviously you've got a back fantastic lady as well because you get a prize because Nicky Henderson oh. is out of form and it was second last year. Soft ground there. Well, let's, let's just stay with the big Bill Baxter. Five, five or six to one, I mean, is that a price you'd be willing to take? No. No, that's not. That was 28th last year. Yeah. But it's full, it's littered with dual winners, this. It, it, it is. Couldn't I, be any more of a plot. No. Like, this is the target. It's, the, the, the flashing is, 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 is going up like that. Uh, like that. Yeah, like that. Just yeah. Like that. Just Your darlings. Who ran it last year? Was it Sam Twist and Davis on it last yeah, year? Sam and Twist so James Bones on, James so Bowen, pretty right. much like for like. Yeah. Your darlings. Say that again. Interesting. Sorry, what was that? Who? Your darling. Thank you. <laughs> he is interesting. Yeah, yeah. one. Um, Has to be fresh. Yeah. He is rubbish. After winning. After, yeah. yeah. Or after a run. But yeah, I remember you asked God in November, this is what is interesting, yeah. and you said. Put it away to entry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember interviewing Ben Pauling after and asking him, you know, was it the track? Does he just like winning it or coming to Ascot or is he just best fresh? And he said, honestly, we cannot get him right after a run. So he needs a break. And as soon as that race was over, he said straight to the top of And uh, he's having a fine season, isn't he? As is Keelan Woods. And mm. he is a decent horse. So he, he definitely deserves his shot. 
Neil Darling, I think. Yeah, he's also got Shake Up Harry in there as well. The gentleman who wouldn't have gone into the national, so he goes in. But yeah, I'm I'm with your darling. He's a horse that I always. <laughs> Thank you very much. Your darling. He's a horse that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I'd always back yeah. first time in the season, and I'd never back him for again, and that's yeah. it. But like I say, he's had a six month break, near enough. Um, yeah, I'm asked with your darling. Your darling. Uh, my darling. I can't remember what I said now. Bill Baxter. Baxter. Bill Baxter. Yeah. Stick him with the five. Okay. Right. Again, it's the Nicky Anderson theory, and again. I'm with him. It's amazing. I'm not with Sergio, and yet I'm with him for most of the meeting after that. Yeah. But what, one of the most impressive performances I've seen. But you're going to have to change all your bets, aren't you? I mean, you're not you're not backing these now, are you? No, no, exactly. Yeah. Because. Oh, oh, you, you might need to do another. <laughs> 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 you might do another, yeah, yeah. another Goliath on Lucky Sixty Three. Edit in a dubbing over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just editing me in. Um, you look like a hero, though. Yeah. I think this is the kind of race where missing Cheltenham is significant. Same. And I do like Shanna Bob. Yeah, there's some races you mind less, don't you? If your your horse has gone to Cheltenham and placed in a two miler and maybe you know mm. just got done for pace. It's in the ground there this year as well. Yeah, whereas testing conditions, three mile proper slog, and the way that Jukebox Man battled on the front as well, he had a really hard race, and then comes here has to do it again over three miles and on soft heavy ground. Like that, that's a massive ask, isn't it? So I agree. Uh, I'm, I'll be with Shannon Bob as well, provided. Henderson horses are running all right. Coming here fresh should be a massive plus against Reading Tom Wrong was pulled out. Dance, the, the other top two, they, they ran in the race at Cheltenham. The last three winners have skipped Cheltenham. Apple away, Jelena Bello, Ahoyce, and your two for the I mean, the rest of the field pretty much has, haven't they? Croke, Croke Park run at Cheltenham. Quintaro, second at Cheltenham. Uh, Croke Park then. Jukebox Man, obviously, Reading Tom Wrong pulled up. Dancing City was third. Quintaro was in the Potemps. Sorry, Croke Park didn't. Uh, and David Maxwell's on one of them as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even start. Um, reading something wrong, I mean, uh, what one was Supreme, by the way, the one that I was always going on about? Uh, Stella Stories. Um, Slade Stewart. Uh, Stella Story. Storyteller. Yes, Storyteller. Yeah, 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 that one. Um, reading Tommy wrong, pulled up, what was it, two, two, three outs, something like that, very quickly. Mm. Nothing wrong, but Paul looked after the horse that day. There was, no, there was no point, straight off, which is, which is the right thing to do, save him something else. It's I a fair point, yeah, he yeah. went into that as the so, favourite, so, didn't he? <coughs> yeah. Two to one favourite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, he's got off a favourite there, he stopped very quickly, Vet found nothing, so therefore, he, he was never asked any questions at this point, it was not what's going on here, so therefore, that would be for me as much as in, you know, no, no run at Cheltenham. And that's why I'm all over um, reading Tony Wrong. Interesting. Yes. I hope I'm reading it's it right. A, but well, it's a leap of faith, doesn't it, to go in with a P next to his name, but... Mm. Especially when they didn't find any reason. Yeah, I mean, that must have a strike the same when you start mm. looking at the form as you go. Unbeaten, unbeaten. How good is his form? Il Atlantique ran okay. Firefox ran okay. I suppose they have all placed yeah, in grade one since, yeah. bar him. There's a lot of unlucky stories in this, this week of, of, of entry. You know, some of them might not be as good as we think they are. A Ro Ro Roco might but not be as good as we think he is or, or whatever. But there are certain ones like Firefox and whatever just, just have been unlucky. I think. I'm going to say this division's similar to the juveniles in that I think Sergino could win because there's no standouts. Mm. Similar in this, there's no horse that Missy. you go, that should be top of the market. So Shanna Bob, if you're taking him on merit and how he looked visually, could win. Just a quick look at Saturdays, obviously the decks aren't in for Saturday, but there's a couple of grade ones and obviously got the national. And you've got the two and a half mile novices hurdle now. This kind of centres around whether Slade still goes or not. Well, it's like this is where Caldwell Pot was going to go. Seven hundred twenty thousand was it? Like James mm. on the back of the sofa. The connections are paid. Uh, Floor run for Paul Nichols. He said no to Cheltenham. This is one of his big guns, you'd imagine, for years to come. All to prove. Mm. Got it all to prove, hasn't he? And how many times do we say about uh, Nichols? And I think the fact that he cost a lot in public. He's not going to be one of rushing him along, isn't he? Mm. He's no. going to have him down as a three-mile chaser for the future. And what he does here, I'd imagine. Paul would have said to the owners, let's, he's, he's let, your next brave man's game. Let's yeah, let's see, let's see how he's going. But I don't think it's the be all and end all for him, and he still has it all to prove against a good field. I actually, I was surprised Asia Master wasn't declared for the two miler. Mm. Whether or not he runs in this, and he might race over in Ireland, especially because Tom Costello maybe wants to ride him in Ireland. But he actually travelled into the race really well in the Supreme. And look, that was a massive day for the horse and for 
the family that own him and obviously Tommy ride him, he said I never expected to have a, a horse that could get to the Supreme, let alone ride in it. Not um, a negative about his riding, but just his experience. Would he now just come into this as a bit of a free hit? You know, Supreme was a massive day for him. He was very slightly wide, kept him out of trouble, finished quite nicely, probably some nerves on the day, less experience than the rest of the field, mostly jockeys wise. He's done that. He's come fourth, I think. Was it? Yeah, fourth. Yeah. He's run a really good race. Probably thinks, actually, I've got, I've got a chance here. I can, you know, get amongst it with the top jockeys and horses. And he might give it a bit more of a confident ride and wouldn't be surprised to see that run well. I think the state still goes here. Current prices, nine to two. It has drifted from three, so that's making me a little bit scared about you know where it's going to go or whatever. Slate Steel goes here it now. It's a very winnable race. Yeah, yeah. Every, yeah. Nine to two is nap material, isn't it? And it's a ridiculous price. What's it going to be? It's going to be... Oh, well, I agree. I'm not even sure. <laughs> yeah, I've, ba yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've backed him to go here, so I hope he does, but... I so he's got brilliant. He, you just, just popped my bet, don't you? I don't think he will. <laughs> yeah. I, I did the we had this about Gaelic Warrior Slate. all every time, and you made me change my mind. The Mystical Power Slade Steel double, but it's looking like Slade Jumps Slade. right-handed. And then the other grade one, the Liverpool hurdle. I don't know why I got an ancient hurdle, Liverpool hurdle. Sorry. Um, again... Well, maybe now you're Is this a case of whose turn is it this time? Or do we expect to see Tiapu? Do we expect to see four in port? Is Hewitt going here? Is he going at all? Nah, you're a great punch down, aren't you? I guess so. The ground's gone against him, has it? I don't, have a, yeah, don't have a strong opinion. I don't. Yeah. I, I, I generally Bone don't. Has, in the ground. conditions? Yeah. yeah. After a couple of days racing on it and maybe a bit more rain, uh, yeah, could, could give him a chance. Botox has maybe into a Nassalam double for the Grand mm. National. Oh, oh. oh I, I, every time I see that horse now, I think of you. Same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you see yeah. you think yourself. Yeah, well, I think of the fact that I didn't back him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was tight. Actually, actually no, 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 no. Hang on a minute. There's a photo, yeah. I did back him twice when he couldn't win off a mark of what? What, one? 35 or something like that? I was trying to find something to put me off there. Uh, yeah, I don't have a strong yeah. opinion on that. What one, though, that I think is a, give, a gimme is found a 50 if he runs in the Timon Novus chase. Yeah. It's He's like so consistent. I don't think his racing takes loads out of him. I think you could run him seven, eight times a year and he'd be all right. He just does the same thing every time. You know what you're getting and it's a much weaker field. I think that is a, a nap on the Saturday at five o'clock if you come back to winner. After the national. Yeah. <laughs> Anything? Uh, for the Saturday? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, bumper. Go. Bumpity bump. Uh, bump, bump, bump. It was on before when it won last time, uh, last time out. Uh, that Tripoli flyer for Fergal and Paddy Brennan. Oh, is that the one he said? Yeah, that's all I said and looked at it and it's 10 to 1 as, as of now. Is Bumbity Bum actually Paddy Brennan? <laughs> he wasn't on Monday. Yeah, I was saying. He wasn't Bumbity Bum, was he? It was Pulity Pull. <laughs> but no, just, um, just teaching a horse and fair play to him. So I think he'll win this bumper and retire. Well, that is an interesting shout, mm -hmm. right? Friday, we will have a comprehensive review, or preview, I should say, of the Grand National itself. But, obviously, before decks are made, give us a line on your winner. Oh, my winner. God, I thought you were going to give me an no, option. I was going like to seven or eight. Yeah. <laughs> my, my winner. Um, National's hard, oh, isn't it's it? It's only 34 now. And you, you like to throw a few darts. I'm not showing you mine yet. But I'm going to... So join us Friday. We'll talk about it at length. Joel, go first whilst he's trying to find the favourite. Mr Incredible for me. Uh, I think about 12, 14 to 1 for Willie Mullins, which should take him on to win the title, the outside of the three. Um, I think Brian Hayes will probably get the ride. Uh, was going really well last time. I think it, uh, it the saddle slipped, didn't it? The canal turn. Uh, 24th, 26th obstacle or whatever. Um, I've note booked him, and this is obviously the target. I looked at the trends. Uh, the trends don't go on my side. However... I'm, I mean, what, what, what has he got? I, I can't see from here. Um, it's something like, is it 10 10 or something? Yeah. The 10 10 or something like that. And th there's loads of little gambles going along, but, but something that was going really well last time, like proper eye catch up, saddle slip, no, nobody's fault, apart from whoever pulled it not <laughs> tight enough. Um, Mr. So, yeah, Incredible. That's, that's, Mr. Incredible wins for me. Mr. Incredible. Didn't Danny Mullins ride him when he won uh, in Over Island? He was going to ride the winner in Meeting of the Woods. Yeah. I think that's going to be my selection, yeah. Third of the festival. Meet of the Waters. Yeah. Um, mm. Behind a very well handicapped Chanty Casco, who was also given a peach for a ride on the front and just kicked at the right time. Meeting of the Waters, I think, stepped up in trip, slightly slower pace, can get into a bit more of a rhythm, only carries 10-7. He's a good horse. Got a good jockey on board as yeah. well. And if you're looking for the stupid ones, you know, like uh, Lucy Turner, 
uh, quite a lot. Chambard, uh, uh, triple figure price. Oh, there's loads of loads the, the, of the, there's loads of good ones there. Yeah. that beach, yeah. Um, but we'll we'll, oh, we'll talk about that length on Friday and the Grand National. I'm, I'm going to go. It's going to go to Wilder, my looks of it, because I'm going to go with Panda Boy. I think he's my leading hope of a uh, an ever growing long list. Uh, shall we say that? It's a gamble, that, isn't it, as well? Panda Boy, yes, indeed, Martin Brassel. Right, give us a bet of the week. Um, you go first. Langadam. To, to win a grade one. You laughed at me. <laughs> to be fair, you did, you did give him as your bet of the week. The bet, bet of the week. I, start, I started <laughs> it. Or Gaelic Warrior. Gaelic Warrior and Langadan and you both every single day. Jumps right and jumps whatever, does this. Langadan went with Langadan for the, for the I, week. I would love to see him win. Just to watch racing Twitter, racing X, explode. Oh, just explode. <laughs> In two ways. The people who are on and the people who weren't on. But, yeah, it's the same as Gavin Cromwell. I only know who's the one who's playing the game. If you're on, it's always better. Well, I got mine in early, didn't I? Sam Roth on the Thursday. Oh, of course, yeah. That's it's one, is it? Yeah. I don't know. I'm yeah, gonna, yeah. I keep coming around. I'm going to go your darling in the top of mm, okay. There we go then. Right, Aintree, cannot wait. Three brilliant days. Softest ground we've had here for many a year, but please make sure you join us Friday when we dissect the Grand National itself.